What I'm doing now, this is a planer, all right? When we uh, put the side on, we keep the frame proud. In other words, it's sticking up above the side. So um, I could just sand this off with a belt sander, but it's easier to get most of the excess off first with a planer. And this is a custom planer. Um, it uh, does a beautiful job. Yeah, you see me sticking my fingers in there? Don't do that. But the guard is on the, on the blade, so. Yeah, it rides on this plate. The plate rides on here. And you can adjust the blades up or down. I've got it set so it, it cuts off maybe the thickness of a dollar bill higher than this surface. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm not normally standing up on the end of a bench to do this, though. But, um, hey, you do what you got to do. That's a nice job. It's um, made by a company called Adler. I didn't really buy it for this application. Uh, I got it years ago because we do a lot of countertops and we have wood edges on the countertops and um, we use this to trim it off. It does a beautiful job. If you have a laminate or solid surface and you've got a wood edge, this is perfect for cutting off because you really can't sand that kind of material. So you need a machine that could cut it perfectly flush without scratching up the surface of the countertop. What I'm doing with the light, when you shine a, well, if you just look at this, it looks great. You don't see any defects at all. But if you take a light and shine it across it, it'll show if there's any bumps or nicks or scratches or anything. And um, yeah, you want to make sure you get those out before you put any finish on. So um, it's always good to shine a light across. The lights from directly above won't show that. So. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing with the flashlight. By the way, these are great little lights. These are the same batteries that I use on my drills, the uh, Makita drills. And um, I bought this LED light to go with the batteries. I think I charge this um, maybe once a month of that. I was actually out a few months ago. Um, a friend of mine had um, come upon, she was coming off the Garden, the New Jersey Garden State Parkway and she saw um, a raccoon with a bottle on its head. Um, she tried to get it, but um, in fact, she did get close enough to pull on the, the bottle and try to pull it off and she couldn't get it off um, and it ran away. So for the next week, every night, I was going out with a few friends. We were all out looking all through the woods trying to find this raccoon. And I had this flashlight out with me and I want to say I was out probably four or five hours every night uh, for five nights. I never had to charge this thing up. It, it ran for four or five hours every night for five days. All right, what I'm going to work on now is I'm making a base platform to set the cabinets on. Uh, a lot of times it's easier to build a separate platform for the cabinet than to make it integral with the um, unit. And that's because if you've got a crooked floor and you've got to scribe it to the floor or level it or something, it's easier to work with just a base platform than the entire cabinet, which in this case is um, two units sitting on top of this that weigh a ton. So, yep, this is what I'm building, a base platform for the cabinets.
Uh, this mountain going all the way around. Oh, oh. sheet of plywood because the fireplace is sitting on it and they have to secure it down uh, but this is a base for underneath this cabinet and there's no need to waste an entire sheet of plywood underneath there because it already has a three-quarter plywood floor so um, and I'm trying to keep things a little light here trying not to get it so heavy so that's the story Joe and I'm sticking to it Straps on these things really annoy me. I don't like to be encumbered. I wear a watch, but I don't like to wear a watch because I don't like things on my wrist. I, you'll rarely ever find me in life with a tie on because I don't like tight things around my neck. And um, I wear aprons to try to keep the glue and junk off my clothes here, but I can't stand these things strap on the back of my neck. I'm constantly trying to move away from it. Okay, um, this is looking good. Uh, the center piece here, you notice it's up off the floor. This is going on a tile floor and I'm going to have to scribe it. And uh, I didn't, this, this doesn't really need a lot of support. This, this one is really to keep this, these sides from bowing in or out. So uh, that's why I kept that up from the floor. But the rest of it, once you sit on the floor, in case there's something off a little bit, we can scribe it. And uh, we don't want to have to worry about scribing. We don't want it rocking on the middle piece underneath here. So there you go, Joe. Another story I'm sticking to. <laughs> well, I'm not going to try to pick that up and put it on here to show you how it works. I will check it and make sure that I didn't mess up here. 37 and a half. This should be 36 and a half. Yep. This is 56 and a quarter. So this should be 56 and a quarter. Yeah. The length stays the same, but this way the base is a little bit wider because we're putting moldings on here. And we want the moldings to to sit on it. We don't want the molding proud of the, um, the base, so there you go. And it is now time for coffee. These are uh, blocks to help. These are four drawers, and I have to mount under mount drawer slides in here. And these are just to make it easier to hang them. Always wear your eye protection. God, any, God only gave us one pair of eyes. He want to make sure you keep them in good health. What I'm using here is a. Um, a spiral bit. It's a compression bit with two bearings on it. All right, so the bearings ride on the on the plywood, and this compression bit, which is um, these things are made for CNC machines. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm trimming off this little bit of excess where the the frame stands a little bit proud of the plywood. Um, I could sand it down, but it's easier to to route it and get the bulk of it off first. Uh, minimal sanding that way. That's my 
new LED light. That's great. Normally I use it while I'm actually sanding, but you can see when I turn it on it messes up the video, so I'll sand it and then I'll just double check it. Just for this. Um, I'll do most of my sanding with it on. But I just want to give you an idea. See what this does. Uh, everything looks good here if I look at it, but if I put the light on, I can see here I, I'm not really quite flush yet. I can't feel it, but I can see it now with the light. You turn the light on, it looks great, right? Or you turn the light off on it and it looks good. So this is why you really need the light to work with. So, um, so what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll turn the camera off now, get this sanded. These are so that I can secure the countertop to this cabinet, okay? I'm going to have the crown molding and everything all on, but I won't have that top piece of the countertop on until we get to the job because this cabinet is going to be way too heavy. Right now it's really, well I'm tilting it, but um, it's pretty heavy. And uh, if we put the countertop on, it's going to make it difficult to carry it, get it into the house, and there's a chance of nicking or scratching. I'd rather carry the countertop in separate. So that's what I'm doing. If you're wondering what I'm doing, why I'm putting all these strips, why I'm wasting all this time. Now, there's shops around that build this stuff out of melamine. They slap it together with dowels. They don't have any of this kind of stuff on here. And, um, I don't know. Um, well, let's not talk about other shops and how they do. This is how I do things, all right? You can see it's time consuming now. He's like, why does it take you so long to build a cabinet? Well, you can see all this detail stuff. This takes time. It takes a lot of time. And then I have to sit because I'm getting old. And every once in a while I have to sit like this and, and rest. I'm not resting as much as I am thinking ahead to my next move. What, what's my next step? And right now my next step is, um, I guess I could, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the countertop on, screw it on, put my crown moldings on, and then take the countertop off. That's what I will do. Know, maybe I'll put the countertop and leave it on. Oh no, I gotta leave it off because I can't spray it here. Yeah. It would be too difficult to reach in here and spray all this. I've got to be able to spray it from the top. So that's why the countertop cannot be on. Okay. And that does make it difficult to put the um, the crown molding on. Because normally you want to hit the crown molding into the frame and up into the counter. But because I'm going to have the counter loose, I'm only able to fasten it to here. I won't be able to nail up into the countertop. So, and I really don't want to put this molding on over on the job. I like to have it all on here. The miter's done and spray paint. It looks much better than having it uh, fastened through the finished lacquer and then putty the holes. It never looks good. That way.
Alright, what you see me doing here is I run all my own moldings. It's rare that I'll outsource and buy moldings. I do, perhaps on occasion, but for the most part I run my own stuff. I've got literally hundreds and hundreds of um, custom cutters to run just about any profile I can ever come up with. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm running all the moldings we're going to need for this job. There you go. Okay, we got the bowlings all ready to go. I really enjoy putting moldings on. I tell you, life doesn't get better than this. Especially when I, you saw me running these, I don't know if I made the video yet, but um, I ran these bones. This wood came in here all in the rough lumber. And um, I jointed it, I faced it, I flattened it, I milled it, ran it through my molding machine, I made my own moldings, and it really makes it enjoyable to build cabinets when you start from scratch. I guess it's like um, when a woman at home is uh, baking a cake and um, the difference between a cake that is when she makes it from scratch. She's she got the eggs and the, and the I don't know, what, what do you make a cake out of? You make batter, you use um, flour and sugar and whatever. Um, but the difference between a homemade cake that's built, made from scratch and a store-bought or a box or one of those frozen pies you just stick in the oven and what a difference. That's the same as these cabinets. That's my installing crew. They come in here, Mike and Ray and Steve and the guys, they, they come in, um, they're not just installed, they work here as well. But, got a, a call from somebody, one of his other customers, he's a private contractor in um, a smell of gas in a commercial building. That's not something to mess with. Mike just went through that himself at his home. He had a smell of gas in his house, he called the gas company, they came down, they locked him out of the house. They said um, he had to redo all the pipes in his house, all the plumbing, uh, all the um, gas pipes. He had to hire a contractor, came down and um, changed, I don't know if he changed all the pipes or all the fittings or what, but he was locked out of his house for two days while they were doing all that. Gas company doesn't fool around. So he's off. He's off to find out what's happening there. probably wondering how the hell am I going to hold that piece on there. I don't know myself. I'm going to try this. I'm 
going to use this as a call. They call this a call. Like when you call somebody, but it's not, it's not spelled like that. It's spelled um, C-A-U-L. side first. You see what we've got here. I've got glue oozing out all along here, which is what I wanted. The end pulled pretty good without the need for clamps. But you can see here now, that was open, but you can see what the clamps have done. They've, they're doing their job pulling that in nice and tight. When you see the glue oozing out like this, then you know it's good. This is just a little bit open up top here, but I'll be able to fix that. Uh, that's what Bondo is for. I don't like using Bondo, but sometimes you've got to do what you got to do, you know? And I get a pretty good deal on Bondo. He's a comedian, Nick, uh, Vic, the, the, the Benavido or something like that. He, I love his videos. He, he's, he's, um, he's got a lot of YouTube videos out there, usually just one or two minutes long of that. And um, he has a series where he's always aggravated, things that tick him off, all right? But, um, He's Italian and, and he does a lot of stuff with his, both his, his wife Lucy and his mom who's a, I guess she came over here from Italy and he's always talking about her. And, and, um, but you know how the Italians, they always know a guy that knows a guy or he's got a cousin that knows a guy or he's got a brother-in-law that knows a guy that can get you this and that and oh you paid 60 bucks for that clamp? Uh, I know, a, my cousin knows this guy that could have got it for two dollars, two dollars. Well, I got, a, I, got a, I got a friend of mine who knows a guy that lives down the street from another guy that he knows that um, he can get me all the bottle I want for $2, $2 a bottle. All right, that's the end of part three. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me some thumbs up if you did, and please subscribe to my channel. Look forward to part four. Um, I'll try to get it out another week or two. I am really busy at the shop, so um, please be patient. Bye, all.